Now, I know that it might be an unpopular opinion in certain demographics of my channel, but there are legitimate findings behind such an observation. You may not like the first part of the video, as it proves that conservatives generally have a lower mean IQ level than liberals, but you will surely enjoy the last, as my explanation of that should be of interest. Now, before you pull out an Andrew Clevin here and assert that, hey, it's actually Republicans who have a higher IQ than Democrats, and technically you'd be right as there are more non-whites amongst Democrats than Republicans. However, when you control for race, the findings are slightly different. Across different sources, whether gathered amateurly or through a form of expert research, the answers are consistent. If you control for race, then the average gap between white Democrats and white Republicans is about 3 to 5 IQ points. But despite that, there are two dimensions in this debate, the economical and the social. Why Democrats pursue economically leftist policies, while white conservatives often embrace economical liberalism, even though a statistically significant portion of conservatives would support a more distributist approach to economics. If we pulled economics out of the equation and solely looked at the social values, the results might be even more radical. However, this particular finding by Satoshi Kanazawa looks at a sample of people in early adulthood, where the heritability of IQ is about 40 to 50 percent environmental as opposed to being 20 percent environmental in later stages of life, and likely that difference is a result of exposure to traditionalist and religious teachings, so take this finding with a grain of salt, but I will return to it in just a bit. For now, I would like to talk about the economical aspect of left and right divide, and this study by Noah Carl should be of interest, as on the sample of the United Kingdom, it was found to be an even more more determinative factor in predicting one's IQ than social beliefs. Although the study was done on a regional level, and it had found out that people who are more likely to be liberal or right-wing on economics, that is to say pro-free market, pro-less taxes, pro-capitalist, pro-deregulations, have a significantly higher IQ than those who are in favor of protectionism, regulations, nationalizations, distributions, and etc. Moreover, this finding was mirrored by the finding of Brian Kaplan and Stephen S. Miller, where they have concluded that IQ has an effect on economic beliefs, and people with higher IQs tend to be economically liberal, and generally it is consistent in other literature that economic beliefs have an even more correlation with IQ than social beliefs, which you often don't hear about. This is why you tend to see a lot of liberals and fiscally conservatives in economics, which is perhaps one of the few right-wing disciplines in the universities, perhaps the only one. Here is for example a small survey of the beliefs of expert economists in comparison to the general public. In fact, the only reason why Republicans are about a third of the number in the economics department is due to the Democrats often being more liberal on social issues. If the Republican Party was liberal on social issues, however, then looking at those results, one would predict that over 75% of the department would have been sold Republicans. In fact, Jonathan Haidt studied a very large sum of libertarians, conservatives, and liberals, and came to interesting conclusions, some of which I will save up for later, but the most important conclusion for now is that in the rating of cognition, libertarians scored way higher than both liberals and conservatives, that is, on the need for cognition and cognitive reflection tasks. Now, I have not converted them into IQ, but by the looks of it, I would assume that the average libertarian is about as intelligent as an average Ashkenazi Jew which is about 107 to 115 IQ points. Now, once we have established that social conservatives tend to be lower in IQ than social liberals, and economic liberals tend to have a higher IQ than economic leftists, you are probably left wondering with why. But for now, I'll just let you know that there are those two brilliant Telegram channels, History Memes Official for sharing historical memes and History Quizzes for testing your historical knowledge, so make sure to check them out. And now back to the video. 
You would be surprised, but there is not a consensus. There are certain theories with limited empirical support. Some may just explain it as a matter of privileged upbringings, where the elites as well as those who run the institutions tend to be economically and socially liberal, and subsequently the people who listen to them conform, as obedience as well as trust in experts is associated with a higher intelligence, while rebelliousness and mistrust in the experts is associated with a lower intelligence. The most plausible explanation for that was proposed by Satoshi Kanazawa in his book The Intelligence Paradox. Liberals, as he defined them as those willing to provide welfare to the genetically unrelated others, are essentially a novel evolutionary phenomenon. This is why they connect more with their friends than their family, are generally more mentally unstable, have lower levels of disgust look uglier, empathize with the genetically unrelated others, and in some cases do that more than for their own. Conservatives, on the other hand, are well adapted evolutionary, as their instincts are more developed than those of liberals, with well developed kinship groups, less support for the novel, higher levels of ethnocentrism, as well as higher mental and emotional stability. You can probably apply the life history strategy here, and conclude that white liberals are more slow life history selected, while white conservatives are fast life history strategists. However, there will be some caveats, and this is why I go with Satoshi Kanazawa's understanding of it. Our entire life history was conservative, and only in the recent times that we are becoming more socially liberal, that is outgroup oriented and less prone to instincts. You can view it as a sort of a mutation that arose when there became a selection pressures for intelligence rather than strength and group loyalty. This is why there are not so many intelligent yet group-oriented Muslims, as explained by Edward Dutton's book Why Islam Makes You Stupid But Also Means You'll Conquer the World, and why there are so many Western intellectuals both now and in the past. But now listen very closely. In chapter 5 of the book, among other things, Satoshi Kanazawa makes a very brilliant point with regards to liberals rejecting objective and easy common sense explanations and resort to complex and absurd absurd ideas such as social constructivism, reader response theory, and now recently critical race theory that he failed to mention. This is a function of their intellect that is maladaptive, he says. A conservative might get and explain a simple concept in a few sentences and still be right. Yet Judith Butler will write a 270-page book about it simply for the sake of hyper-rationalizing and destroying the group cohesion and still be wrong. The thing that you need to understand Higher intelligence does predict income and other things, but it does not predict evolutionary adaptation, as high IQ people produce less children and generally are slow life history strategists, adopting maladaptive behaviors and beliefs, which is not what you want in the current environment, which is selecting for fast life history people. It might have been better to be a slow life history strategist in the 19th century and even prior, while more intelligent people had more children, but definitely not now, and there is plenty of evidence to support that. Slow life history strategists are in a sort of a evolutionary mismatch. It is true that in one area, such as general intelligence, liberals are better off than conservatives, yet they fail across most other measures, as they are not balanced across the moral foundations as are conservatives. This is evident not just in their higher neuroticism and all other factors I have outlined earlier, this is very much evident by their political beliefs as well and there are a few large studies that have documented it, and not just in their moral foundations, but in their moral circles, which arguably is even worse, where they empathize with an outgroup higher than for their own group, and allocate much moral resources to lesser beings, such as animals often becoming vegan in the process. Their beliefs can be characterized as being hyper-rational, abstract, detrimental to their group, and as further from reality as possible, flowing somewhere in the air, ignoring all the empirical evidence that would contradict their ideal planned society based on harm avoidance and equality. For example, according to that, the reason why libertarians are so high in IQ just like Ashkenazi Jews is for the same reason both groups are highly maladaptive, unless we are talking about Hopian libertarians and about a third of Jews who thankfully happen to be right wing. The majority of these groups are acting in some regards against their own genetic interests. Jews by intermediate 
marrying and becoming less genetically Jewish, and libertarians advocating for maladaptive and group self-destructive beliefs, such as open borders, free markets, and social liberal beliefs, which are also, by the way, are advocated by most Ashkenazi Jews in Israel and Ashkenazi Jews in the West. Contrary to the popular beliefs that argue Jews want open borders for the West, yet want closed borders for Israel, the reality is different. Perhaps it is true for most non-Ashkenazi Jews living in Israel, who have an even more radical beliefs than Richard Spencer on race, yet also have lower intelligence, as they were not targeted and selected for under the same conditions as Ashkenazi Jews, who overwhelmingly are leftists both in Israel and outside of Israel. Now, I might have some pushback against me for calling free markets maladaptive. They are in the way that they destabilize the economy and the cohesion of the genetically similar, flooding it with the products and the influence of the genetically unsimilar, to a point of Karl Marx being tactically in favor of it, as it will help to destroy social cohesion. And when you have Karl Marx on your side, you know your side is wrong. Now, that aside, I do have a theory from which one can look at the situation. I have called it the adaptability continuum, which may be somewhat intuitive if you have heard of life history strategy continuum. However, this operates more in line with Satoshi Kanazawa's understanding of politics. On one side of the continuum, you have a highly adaptive group to live under any environmental conditions that one may refer to as the adaptive side of the continuum, characterized by average or below average intelligence, who are physically and mentally healthy, are group-oriented and are higher in ethnocentrism, are morally balanced, not experiencing any significant levels of distress in a hostile environment, as well as living a conservative lifestyle that translates to not making stupid decisions that would lower their survival rate, such as producing few children. On the other side of the continuum, there is a highly maladaptive group that can only survive under very specific conditions, which one may refer to as the maladaptive side of the continuum, characterized by very high or low levels of intelligence, by being low in physical and mental health, by being less group-oriented and low in ethnocentrism, not being morally balanced, in the case of libertarians, for example, being way less empathetic than needed, and in the case of liberals, being way more empathetic than needed, to a point of being pathologically altruistic, as an example, as well as experiencing significant levels of distress in a hostile environment, and finally, not living a conservative lifestyle by, for example, being way more likely to abuse drugs. Now, given that this is my hypothesis, primarily gathered from observations throughout different datasets unified together, it will be better off for me to conduct a real research about this topic. However, I will not be able to do so on my own and would probably need some help. So, if you're a person who is in the academia or has ever conducted surveys, it is recommended that you contact me and we could do this together, where I will formulate this very hypothesis more clearly and perhaps revise it a little so we can test it. The predictions are that right-wingers will score high on adaptability, while leftists would score low and those in the middle will be in the middle. The reason why I need a partner is so that after a survey is assessed, one can make a factor analysis and perhaps come with a general factor of adaptation, which may be comparable to the general factor of intelligence or the g-factor. Hopefully, if this ever goes more popular, it will revolutionize the way we think about politics, as adopting and rejecting political beliefs based on the general factor of adaptation is highly based, I should say. Anyways, thank you for watching, and if you like this video or want to help me with the research or produce more videos like this, please give me some shekels on PayPal and Subscribestar.